Welcome to Chicago Scholars Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for more. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com forward slash Chicago Scholars. Before we get started, I do want to share that we we need students to actually complete an attendance form um, to um, add to, to the list. So I'm gonna drop that into the chat for everyone to go ahead and utilize that. And so that way we'll go ahead and get started after that. First up, we will have Case Western Reserve. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Tom Fanning from Case Western Reserve University. I'm your presenter today. And by the way, I'm also the staff member at CWRU in charge of recruitment in Illinois. So uh, welcome Chicago scholars. Very happy to be here. I have some slides I'd like to show uh, to give you some sense of my institution uh, and give you uh, some idea what might be in store if Case Western Reserve became your choice. So welcome to Case Western Reserve uh, with our sunny pictures and our beautiful campus. Uh, four bullet points for you to understand the kind of institution that we are. We're a private mid-sized research university with four colleges of the university, engineering, nursing, the Weatherhead School of Management, our business school, and our College of Arts and Sciences. So some of the hallmarks of uh, your experience at Case Western Reserve, if we became your choice, is that uh, we're a place that puts a primacy on uh, hands-on learning, experiential learning, and that could be on the research side, it could be on the internship or co-op side, uh, connection to industry. Uh, so uh, we expect that you're gonna have a lot of fun both inside and outside of the classroom at CWRU. And we also think we have in place a really nice set of advisors uh, and people are gonna work with you to make sure you take full advantage of the kind of institution that we are. And we also wanna make a big pitch for Cleveland uh, right along uh, beautiful Lake Erie, uh, you know, a couple of great lakes over from where you are. Uh, get on Interstate 90 and you'll get to Cleveland in about five hours. So uh, that's going on in the city. So when you talk about institutional uh, offerings academically, uh, probably in the marketplace of higher education, some of our largest areas are in the engineering and the STEM fields, but you can study the arts and the humanities and nursing and business. So it's a comprehensive institution. And one thing that might be interesting about us when, as you look at the different schools and some wonderful schools on the list today, is that when you're applying for admission to Case Western Reserve, you're applying to the university. And if you're admitted, you may choose any major that you want or majors and cross different colleges of the university. So the flexi flexibility of the curriculum is something our students absolutely love about Case Western Reserve. I also wanna point out that we are a top tier research institution, like again, many of my colleagues in this session today. Um, but uh, if you're an undergraduate, 86% of our undergraduates are involved in academic research. And that is a big deal. And that should be an experience of Case Western Reserve becomes your choice. By the way, Chris Carr in this picture as an undergraduate student discovered his own galaxy. Uh, and not that every student's gonna do that, but we're the kind of place where uh, ideas can come to life and connecting with faculty and experts and using the facilities uh, might offer great opportunities at a place like Case Western Reserve. And we have wonderful resources for all that work to happen. In fact, one of the more famous stops on a tour of Case Western Reserve is the Sears Think Box. It's a seven story building. This is our maker space. It's open access, anybody can use it, but high end 3D printers, laser cutters. Again, a kind of place where ideas can come to life. You can build prototypes, test the marketplace. So a place with a lot of resources and it's a very exciting place for people with ideas. I also wanna mention Cleveland, we are, uh, Again, located in the city, and we use the city quite often. People head downtown to work, uh, the Fortune 500 companies and mid-markets. They go downtown for the theater district, for all the athletic venues. So people who come to Case Western Reserve will become Cleveland lovers, even if they weren't when they got here, because they're going to use the city. Now, our campus is also in a famous neighborhood of Cleveland. You can see in this picture, we're located about five miles from downtown. The neighborhood is called University Circle in the Tinkhamville University Center in Orange. And the screen is the center, the student center on our campus. But we're, sounded, we're surrounded by the major cultural institutions in Cleveland, the Museum of Art, uh, Severance Hall, home to Cleveland's orchestra, 
And we're also surrounded by three major hospitals, university hospitals, the Cleveland VA, and the world-renowned Cleveland Clinic. So anybody doing anything in healthcare is gonna have access to these institutions that surround our campus. And then with so many people living on campus, 84% uh, of our undergraduates live on our in our campus residence halls. All the different activities you might expect would thrive, do thrive. And so if you're an engaged person who's been involved in a lot of clubs and activities, I think you're gonna find a great outlet at our institution. And we're drawing students from all over the country, all over the world. And there are over 400 students right now at Case Western Reserve from the greater Chicagoland area. So you would have connections if you came to uh, Cleveland to Case Western Reserve University. So very quickly process wise, uh, inevitably when you talk about admissions, you end up talking about numbers. Uh, and I do uh, wanna make the announcement that uh, we are test optional for, and we were test optional for fall of 21, fall of 22 and 23. Um, we do look at the grades and the classes that you've taken. We're a school that will meet 100% of demonstrated need on the financial aid side. And we also use merit scholarship money. And then there are all kinds of different program plans for admission, including early action, early decision, regular decision, and then our pre-professional scholars program, which is a uh, guarantee admit program to our medical school and our dental school. So that quickly in a nutshell is Case Western Reserve. My contact information is the bottom left-hand corner of the screen here. Again, my name is Thomas Fanning, uh, and I am the staff member in charge of Illinois. So I look forward to reading all of your applications, and it's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Next, we have Wooster Polytech Institute. Greetings everyone from Worcester um, here over here on the East Coast. Um, my name is Michael, Michael Myers. Yes, you have the opportunity um, to say that your admissions rep for Chicago at WPI is Michael Myers. Um, I work on the diversity and outreach initiatives team specifically, um, but outside of those responsibilities, I do read the applications for Illinois and I'm super excited to meet everyone. And so over the next couple of minutes, we're gonna go through some of the awesome things that are going on over here in the Northeast um, at WPI. Awesome. So WPI, there's lots of things that differentiate us from other institutions that are similar to us. Um, but what I like to mention always is that we're a STEM focused institution, um, but not just a STEM focused institution, we're one where humanities do matter. So alongside all of the different STEM programs that we have, we also have a pretty robust um, a pretty robust, excuse me, a pretty robust college of arts and sciences. And also we have a business school. So there's a nice mix of students that come to WPI to study and learn. Um, they conduct university level research um, and they participate in lots of our project-based curriculum offerings. And so we'll discuss that in a little bit here. But most importantly, I think what sets us apart um, especially when I chat with students around campus, is that we're an institution where you can make the most out of your time here. So we like to call that our more in four. Um, and I normally would make you chant that with me, more in four, um, but we'll talk about it in a second. All right. Oh, where'd it go? Here we are. Awesome. So Worcester. Um, yes, it's pronounced Worcester. Yes, not Worcester, but it's a college town. We are the, the second largest city in New England, um, just next to Boston. Um, and we're exactly what it sounds like. There's 11 area colleges. A lot of times our students will have moments and opportunities to intermingle, take courses at other colleges in the area, but our population gets pretty dense in the semesters. You'll see that there's about 38,000 students that join us here at Worcester. But beyond that, my favorite part of Worcester would be the culture. Um, there's lots of good places to eat, places to ski. There are beaches around that you can get to, but we're pretty good with transit as far as that's concerned. And so you can get to Boston on our train system in just about an hour, um, not too long to get to New York, get some skiing in in the winter time. And it's really just a fun place to be. Small town vibe, the big city life is how I like to consider it. Awesome. 
And so a little bit of an overview of WPI. So if you're a student that's interested um, in any of the areas of STEM or business, WPI is definitely a good place for you. We have a smaller community, so you'll always expect roughly about 5,000 student, undergraduate students on campus. So it's definitely a family size atmosphere um, and a place where you can focus on your passions, but also focus on humanities. And so you'll see that roughly 50% of the student body will end up majoring in an area of engineering. Um, and we have about 12 or so programs that are specifically tailored towards engineering. But the rest of our students end up majoring in different areas of math and some areas of biology. We have a pretty robust business school, as I mentioned, so a lot of our students will end up in those areas. But utilizing all of the different colleges and things that we push you out into with our flexible curriculum is how our students are able to complete double majors, um, double majors and minors, four and five year bachelor's and master's degrees. Um, and a lot of students are able to utilize our humanities components with our depths and breadths in those areas um, to maybe you want to major in an area of STEM, but also make a minor in a foreign language. You can do that here. So we have lots of different offerings for you and a pretty robust set of places for students to major in. Um, and a lot of our students, when you apply to WPI, will end up applying as undecided and that's okay because similar to my colleague that presented before me when you apply to WPI you're simply applying here and then you can choose which major you'd like to end up in afterwards and so here's a little bit about how our term system works so we're not a traditional school where we have a um, spring semester and fall semester but we do things in seven week terms so you have your a term b term c term d term and in between the A and B and C and D, you'll have a true 10 day break where you can rest and then your normal longer winter break between B and C term. We have options for you in the summertime where you can take courses and utilize um, some of that more aspect of doing more in four. And what I'd love to highlight on this slide is our non-punitive grading policy. So every student at WPI um, definitely gets to have an A, B, or C, or a no record, meaning that it won't show up on your transcript if you don't meet the criteria for one of the aforementioned grades. Um, and that goes right alongside our flexible curriculum. Now at WPI, there is a project-based curriculum. And so you can see some of those projects here on the screen. Um, they are in order of freshman year to senior year. But during your IQP, which is your interactive qualifying project, most students will go abroad to complete that. Um, and we have about 50 project sites around the world to do so. And I'm gonna speed along here. I definitely, um, the six minutes goes by quick. But the last piece that I want to touch on is that this year WPI is happy to announce that we are test blind without an application fee. And please, please, please email me for more information. Thank you. Thank you so much. Six, six minutes Ooh. does go by really fast. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next up we have University of Rochester. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Kathleen Papala. I am Regional Director of Admissions at the University of Rochester. My pronouns are she, her. Um, and as my title says, I am regionally based uh, here in the Chicagoland area and do most of our recruitment throughout the Midwest. Um, but I also do manage our application review process. So I train our readers, I make sure that our decisions are thoughtfully made, and I work closely with our dean and director to make sure we bring in the class uh, that we're looking for. So I'm really excited to have a chance to chat with you a little bit today. Uh, first and foremost, our location, uh, Rochester is not really a city that a lot of people are overly familiar with. We are very much in Western New York, about three hours south of Toronto, about six hours north of the Philadelphia, New York City area really accessible to get to from Chicago. Um, like I said, I live here, but I do go back to campus very frequently uh, during the academic year and during the summer. And I fly directly out of O'Hare, uh, right into Rochester Airport or Frederick Douglass Airport as it was recently renamed. And campus is about two miles from the airport. So I land, get off the plane, get my rental car, and I'm on campus within about 25 minutes. So really, really accessible. It is about a 10 hour drive from Chicago. So easy to drive as well. But being uh, in a city, you know, we're a small city in Rochester, 1.1 million people, and we are a medium-sized school. We have about 5,600 
total undergraduates, about 11,000, if you were to include our graduate and professional degree students. And we are very much a residential campus. Um, we do feel like that residential community helps build a stronger bond between classmates, gives you better connection to your faculty members and access to research. Um, and so housing is guaranteed for four years and over 90% of our students will stay on campus for four years. So not a commuter school, not a place where after a year or so, you're gonna have to find your own housing. So while we have this very traditional campus right there at the river campus, aptly named because we're along the Genesee River, we're only about two and a half to three miles um, south of downtown Rochester. And so while it is a small city, um, I typically will liken it to a place like a Milwaukee um, or in Indianapolis, kind of that same size and feel from the Midwest. Um, it has all of those great amenities for great coffee shops and restaurants, uh, live music venues, great um, art exhibits and art houses. Um, we do have our own medical center, which is located directly across the street from the River Campus, which houses Strong Memorial Hospital, the Galasano Children's Hospital, Cancer Research Center. So for those of you who might be thinking pre-med or health professions down the line, um, definitely great access to the U of R Medical Center for all sorts of activities and experiences there. Um, off our campus, uh, the only undergraduate program that we do have that's not on the River Campus is our dual degree program with Eastman School of Music. Any of you who are interested in a conservatory program, one of the best in the country. Um, and so that is located about 10 minutes off campus, closer to downtown. Um, but all of our students have access to Eastman for courses and lessons and things like that. Um, really just kind of wanted to show you pretty pictures of campus. People always think Rochester is like the frozen tundra that's covered in snow all year. Um, this shows that's not the case. We do have four beautiful seasons, but really what I wanted to highlight on this particular slide is that word Meliora on the bottom right. Um, that is our motto. It translates uh, into ever better. Um, and it really is very much embedded in the DNA of who we are as an institution. You know, we want students who are going to come and be real change makers who are going to work towards making not just themselves and their families and their friends better, but their community and those around them better as well. And so in, during the application process, we do seek out students who have sort of lived some of those Meliora core values of equity and leadership, integrity, openness, respect and accountability, um, because we do. We want you to come, like I said, and be change makers, disruptors. Uh, hold us accountable, hold each other accountable and really work towards a better life and a better world for yourself. Um, one of the main things that makes us a little bit unique is our curriculum. Um, a lot like uh, my friend at WPI, we have what's known as a flexible curriculum, where there are actually no required subjects at the University of Rochester. So you very simply study what you love, and you don't study the things that you don't love. So for those of you who are sitting here thinking, you know what, when I'm done with high school, I really never want to take whatever that is for you. Uh, science, math, English, foreign, whatever that is. Um, you don't have to. You simply come and you focus on the areas of study that inspire you, that interest you, that are going to make you better in, in lots of ways. And you forgo having to study the things that really don't do that, that don't inspire you um, during your time with us. Because of that flexibility, 50% um, of our students will double major. Um, over 85% will have at least a major and a minor. So knowing that you're going to come to us with probably multiple academic interests, you're going to have lots of opportunity uh, to engage and do courses in a wide variety of areas. We, um, just like uh, Case Western, uh, we are a tier one or R1 research institution. Uh, we are one of the smaller ones. Uh, the average tier one research institution is about 26,000 students. So with our population of 5,600, we are pretty small um, on that scale. But that really means we're able to give you better um, and more you know, pervasive um, options for research. Um, research does begin as undergrads as early as your first year, so you have that option to do it. Um, and it's available in all of our disciplines, whether you are a STEM-focused student or whether you're a student who's focusing in business or art history. Um, there's research available in all of those disciplines. Our research is also funded, so that's a, you know something to think about as well. We're an active community. We want students who are going to come and be engaged members of our community. So we've got over 300 clubs and organizations. We've got a Division Three athletic program plus club and intramural sports. Um, lots of ways, lots of things for you to have a really good life. You know, the dirty little secret is that more than 50% of your time in college is spent outside of the classroom. So we want to make sure we give you a really good opportunity to have a big, good, comprehensive life. Um, I'll skip that because I see that my time is done. Uh, and I'll go a little bit into application deadlines. Um, we are an early decision school finding also regular decision. We are test optional as well. We were test optional before COVID. We're always going to be test optional. Uh, so you're never going to be compelled to do that for either scholarship or admission. So um, again, my name is Kathleen. I'll put my contact information in the chat before we leave. Um, look forward to talking with you. Thanks so much.
Thank you. So next up, we have Union College. Good evening, everyone. Michael Moore, Union College, he, him. I want to uh, thank you all for joining us. My, um, I guess my initial thoughts on, on this session, particularly for students that are coming out of uh, this past um, plague, as one of my colleagues like to call it, is that there is power in union. So we talk about our campus, we talk about the platforms, the personalities, the opportunities as really being uh, founded on power. So if you think about a campus of about 2,200 students uh, in Schenectady, New York, which is on the banks of the Mohawk River, right at the convergence almost of the Mohawk and the Hudson River along the Erie Canal, uh, central upstate New York. So two and a half hours north of New York City. And we're about west or east, about three and a half hours of our friends out in Rochester. And then about, uh, about another two and a half to three hours from those friends of ours over east of us um, in Worcester. So gives you an idea of where we are geographically. Uh, founded in 1795 and have had this kind of really staunch, almost um, really strong commitment to balance on our campus, uh, connecting students and faculty, and again, platforms and personalities um, to, to thrive and allow students to thrive in an environment where we view each other as brothers and sisters through wisdom. So most of you might know who um, Athena is the, uh, the Greek goddess of wisdom. Well, her Roman counterpart on our campus, Minerva, is pretty much our motto, our, um, uh, our namesake of one of our campus programs, the Minerva program that we strive to become brothers and sisters through wisdom. So at the very outset, when we talk about power through connection, we want students, faculty, staff to look at themselves as brothers and sisters through the wisdom that we bring, that we share, that we build uh, as parts of that community. So you'll see in the photos that are highlighted, you'll see connections between faculty and students. Um, the seven Minerva houses that operate on campus serve as hubs for our students and faculty to engage, to build programming, for our students to lead and sharing information, uh, discovery of knowledge and, uh, and wisdom. So if you want to design a, a curriculum for uh, elementary age students to learn math or art, or teach them a sport aimed around connecting community with society and STEM, you can do that. So connection is super important to our campus and we want everybody that arrives in our community to feel a part of it. Uh, we also talk a great deal about the power of uh, integration. So integration typically manifests itself on our campus in a lot of different ways. I'll focus on the academic as well as the, uh, the social and cultural. So academically, about 82% of our students will have an interdisciplinary type of study. So they may be on a path toward becoming an engineer. Uh, Union College is, is uh, one of the first, I believe the first uh, liberal arts college to offer a four year accredited uh, engineering degree. So you might also find some of those same students focusing on engineering who are doing a co-curricular or interdisciplinary program with the arts or sciences. Uh, and likewise, you'll find students that are in economics or philosophy or uh, sociology that are really, you know, as passionate about coding and uh, marketing uh, as they are about their, their programs in, in the humanities and social sciences. So again, about 82% of our students are studying interdisciplinary programs. And then we also have kind of a second or third group of students who um, they know what they want to do, but it doesn't reside on or honor in one particular box or even a combination of two boxes, right? So we call that organizing themes. So if you imagine 16, 17 year olds, 25, 50, 80 year olds have different themes that might govern uh, how they view the world, uh, might pose the questions that they have about the society and uh, the country or the community that we live in. Uh, and organizing, really getting those thoughts together uh, and allowing students to shape a, a program, a major, if you will, that satisfies their particular interest, allows them to ask and pose the questions that they have um, is what our organized theme is really about. So whether or not you know exactly what you wanna study or if you are still deciding, or if you have a few areas, you can do that, uh, you can do that at Union College. Uh, and then integration from a social and cultural perspective, we have students from over 45 different countries, uh, 43 different states. Uh, we meet 100% of demonstrated need for all of our students. We offer merit award. 
uh, as well as, as grants that might satisfy or remove some of the hurdles for those middle income families that are often told that they make too much money uh, to qualify for any need-based aid. So we really try to remove those barriers so that students on our campus can have these genuine bonds, these genuine low walls or almost no barriers between communication, uh, no barriers between uh, sharing their thoughts and ideas and really getting to know each other uh, across disciplines, across interests, across uh, any other type of barrier or um, uh, identifying uh, mark that you, you might uh, consider. Uh, we also talk about the power of immersion. So students grow, they're challenged by taking the deep dive uh, and challenging themselves, uh, challenging what they've been taught for the past or the first 17 or 18 years of their lives when they get to our campus. They're pushed into positions. We talk about being comfortably uncomfortable. Uh, our president, David Harris, uh, who is a model of, of doing that, he has launched the Union College Challenge where he advises students, faculty and staff to really push themselves outside of those comfort zones that may, that may have developed. Uh, and that comes from immersing yourself in the experience, immersing yourself in your academic program, immersing yourself in the culture. 65% uh, of our students will immerse themselves in global programs that we have through uh, our exchange or study abroad. Um, we have another, you know, 82% uh, of our students will take advantage of our undergraduate presence with faculty and get involved with research. So, and it's an every student model. So everything that you see in our catalog, every opportunity, uh, club organization platform is open to every student, and we invite you to uh, to be a part of that. Uh, we're also a, uh, an early decision school, offer one, early decision one, November 15th, uh, early decision two is January 15th. So hopefully we'll get to see some, some applications, and then we also have early action and a regular decision that ends uh, November 1 and January 15th, respectively. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so next up, we have Lawrence University. Thank you, Jessica. And hello, scholars. My name is Keegan White. Uh, I'm Associate Director of Admission at Lawrence University. Use he, him pronouns. Lawrence is a proud partner of Chicago Scholars, and we have numerous CS alumni on our campus and among our graduates. So I encourage you to, to join us here. Uh, we are a small college of about 1,500 students located three and a half hours north of Chicago in beautiful Appleton, Wisconsin, the fifth largest city in the state of Wisconsin. Immediately adjacent to campus, you're going to find a bustling downtown with coffee shops, restaurants, farmers market, museums, Riverside Trails, a performing arts center that hosts the biggest uh, touring Broadway shows like Hamilton. We have Dear Evan Hansen coming this coming year. Uh, you'll also find a bus to whisk you back to Chicago in about four hours and plenty of fellow Chicagoans eager to, eager to carpool. Um, Lawrence is unique in that we are both a nationally ranked College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and a highly selective conservatory of music. Both are undergraduate only and our students pursue either a Bachelor of Arts degree in our college, a Bachelor of Music degree in our conservatory, or both through our five-year double degree program. We offer a wide range of majors across the humanities, sciences, and the fine arts. Students are challenged and nurtured through very personalized experiences in our small classes with a ton of faculty connections, thanks in part to our eight to one student to faculty ratio, which is one of the smallest in the country. We have a student body that's inherently curious, welcoming, engaged, and passionate about what they do. And faculty are equally engaged, not only with their own scholarship, but especially in their teaching. At Lawrence, we are small in number, but rich in people and resources, all deeply invested in the success of our students. The academic program at Lawrence is bookended by two quintessential scholarly experiences, first year experience and senior experience. Uh, first year experience is an expansive introduction to the liberal arts, which ensures that each student and faculty member is exposed to a diversity of subjects and perspectives and has the opportunity to learn, communicate, and expand their horizons. Senior experience is the culmination of the Lawrence education, unique to each student, yet universal to students across the university. Every graduating senior produces something significant. It could be an independent or collaborative research project, art exhibition, scholarly paper, or a senior recital. The point is you're sharing your gifts, generating new knowledge and preparing for your next step in life. 
Our distinctive academic journey through the liberal arts teaches Laurentians to be adaptable, to thrive in difficult circumstances, and doesn't just prepare you for a career, but rather helps you to flourish professionally, personally, and as a contributing member of your community. So it's no coincidence that our recent graduates enjoy a 98% placement rate six months after graduation. Lawrence is a residential community with nearly 100% of our students living on campus all four years. We are requiring the vaccine and all of our students will be living on campus this fall. So we're really excited to have our whole community back with us. Um, I could say lots about the activities and outside of the classroom, um, but I'll, I'll just say that at Lawrence, we have the amenities of a big school right outside our residence hall doors and our students engage wholeheartedly, enthusiastically with endless panache. Um, in addition to our residential campus at Lawrence, we have two satellite campuses. The first is Bjorklinden, this beautiful lodge on a mile of Lake Michigan shoreline in Door County, Wisconsin, about an hour from campus, hour and a half, that students use as a weekend retreat center. So it's this truly beautiful and serene setting that holds a really special place in the heart of all Laurentians. And then our last campus is our London Center in central London, which is the most popular of our 50 study abroad programs. About half of our students choose to study abroad. Um, and if you're looking for that global experience, you'll find that Lawrence's student body and faculty is very diverse on our main Appleton campus with nearly every race and state represented, 25% of whom are first generation college students and 15% hailing from 50 foreign countries on every continent. Um, here's a quick look at our average profile. We are test optional, have always been, and will continue to be. Uh, we have a holistic process. For some students, um, the, the application or the in, an interview is a great additional um, element. So we look forward to seeing you at the onsite. I hope that you'll sign up to interview with us at onsite. Um, just remember that your academic preparedness um, and potential is, is definitely a key factor of our consideration. I also wanted to just briefly mention that Lawrence's partnership with Chicago Scholars affords scholars several advantages, not least of which is our generous financial aid policy. Every admitted Chicago Scholar will see, receive $31,000 per year merit scholarships for four years. And thanks to a special grant, we meet the full demonstrated financial need of, of nearly all of, of these Chicago scholars. Um, we also give you priority registration on visit and summer enrichment programs, reduced enrollment deposit, individualized support from very beginning to very end. And, and speaking of that individualized support, don't forget about me. I'm your trustee admissions counselor based right here in Chicago, a Lawrence alum ready to guide you through that process um, so look forward to working with you and, and giving you my personal attention. Um, you're, you, I put you at the center of what I do every day, um, the most important thing that I do in my job. And I really look forward to, to working with you uh, and, and reading your applications and, and meeting you at onsite. And with that, I'll pass it back to J Jessica for one more. Thank you so much. Um, and so next up we have Denison University. All right, thank you so much, Jessica. Share this. All right, thank you very much, everybody. It is my pleasure to be here with you this evening. Uh, my name is Nick Radmer. I am an assistant director of admission here at Denison University. Uh, I am a the admission counselor who represents students from the city of Chicago. So I'm very excited to be working with. Uh, but I am also an alum of Denison University. I graduated in 2018 um, and I am originally from the Chicagoland area. So I've had the experience, not just of being a Denison student, but being a Denison student of coming from the same area as y'all. Um, so I just wanna dive right in here. I know that when you go and attend a lot of these presentations, a lot of the information, a lot of the figures can kind of start to blend together. So I just wanna to toss that really quickly on the screen here for you to look at. Um, the only things I wanna point out here is that we are like several of the other schools uh, on the call this evening. We we are a test optional institution. We have been for about 10 years now, 15 years now, in fact. Um, and we are as well a four year residential community, meaning that students, 100% of our students are living on campus all four years of undergrad. Uh, the entire campus is about 15 minutes walk from one end to the other. So you are gonna be in very close proximity with your friends all four years. 
Uh, we do have about 2300 students as well. So it is a fairly small liberal arts campus and we are located in Granville, Ohio. Uh, we are right in the middle of the state. And I think that Granville is a pretty surprising community for people who aren't already familiar with it. You know, I think when people think of a small town in rural Ohio, they don't really think of this like New england -y style village, uh, but that's really what we have here. There's just about everything that you need out of a great small college town. You have a bunch of coffee shops and restaurants. There's a really great frozen custard store called Wits, uh, the original of which is located in Granville. So it's a pretty small, quiet place where you're actually living and resting your head. Uh, but if you want something that's much larger, much more bustling, we are very closely located to the city of Columbus, which is just about a half an hour drive away. And Columbus, again, very surprising for people who aren't already familiar with it. Uh, there's a really exciting uh, art scene in Columbus, plenty of live sports. Um, there's a really great restaurant scene in Columbus. Several Fortune 500 companies actually have their headquarters located in Columbus. And I think we have a really great track record of actually placing our students in internships and career launching them into careers after they graduate here. Um, but again, coming from Chicago, uh, it's about a six hour drive to Columbus, so very easily accessible. There's also a very great airport located in Columbus as well, where it's just about an hour flight to and from Chicago. Um, and we have shuttles that constantly shuttle students back and forth from the airport as well. So a really, really great location. I really think you get the best of both worlds and that you're living and studying in somewhere fairly quiet and small, have access to something much larger right down the road from you. But what we really think distinguishes uh, um, among our inst peer institutions is three main, first of which are the relationships that students build. You, if you ever hear our president give a speech, he'll use the phrase of relational college over and over because relationships are really at the heart of everything we do here at Denison. And of all the different kinds of relationships that you can build here with classmates, professors, staff members, I think what really sets us apart are the relationships that students form with mentors here. Um, about 92% of our students can report that they found someone who isn't necessarily going to like hold your hand through the college process, but someone who's going to have your back every step of the way. Uh, there's someone who's going to help you uh, find all the right resources that you need to succeed, someone who is going to help you got, uh, through the transition from high school into college, um, and someone who's just going to be in your corner advocating for you all four years of Denison. Uh, I think there's been study after study that's shown that the single greatest indicator of success for college students is whether or not they can say they found mentor throughout their four years. And we're really proud, not just of how many of our students find mentorship relationships, but how deep those relationships run. And you know, now that I'm an alum, I'm very, very excited to say that so many of those that I built have now persisted into my adult life. But obviously, being a liberal arts college, another big thing that you get to take advantage of are the academic opportunities that set Denison apart. Uh, as you saw in that slide earlier, we do have 56 different academic programs that students can choose from. Uh, we have several of the more traditional liberal arts programs, but we also have quite a few that are more unique to Denison. Uh, so in past years, we've instituted a narrative journalism program that combines a traditional journalism program with a creative writing program. Uh, we have a global health program that we instituted last year that we didn't mean to be quite so timely, but it just turned out that way. Um, but students can also design their own major as well here at Denison. So if there's something completely different that you want to explore, you have the freedom to do that here at Denison too. Uh, average class size is about 19 students. From my own experience, the largest class I ever took had about 25 people, and the smallest I ever had was about six of us sitting in a circle. So you definitely get to build close relationships with your classmates and your professors in this environment. But obviously, extracurricular opportunities are going to be a big deal for you as well. Um, for students interested in athletics, we have the Mitchell Center, which is a state-of-the-art athletic facility. And for students who are interested in the performing arts, our newest building that we have on campus is actually a new performing arts center that combines the departments of dance, music, and theater. They now all exist under one roof. Um, but for students who want to pursue something else, we have over 180 different student organizations that you can pursue here at Denison. But the last big thing I want to talk about are the outcomes that our students find on the other side of graduation. Uh, for that, we have the Knowlton Center. This is our career development office, which is staffed by a bunch of career counselors whose job it is to kind of have their ear to the ground about potential internship opportunities, career opportunities, uh, graduate programs that you may be interested in pursuing. These are all services that are going to be available to you all four years of undergrad. And they're also going to be available for you uh, for 
the entire time, your entire lifetime after you graduate from Denison as well. So you'll be able to take advantage of this for pretty much your entire life. So very quickly, I'll go through this next one. I just want to point out to, um, we do have two different deadlines. Early decision is in November 15th. Regular decision is January 15th. We are a test optional school, like I mentioned. And I do just want to point out that we are a school that does meet 100% of the demonstrated need of all of our applicants. So if you are in any way worried about financing your dentist and education, uh, please do not let finances block you from sending in an application. Um, our financial aid packages are really second to none uh, nationwide. So thank you again again so much for your attention. Um, I'll turn it back to Jessica now and I really uh, look forward to meeting more of you and uh, getting a chance to connect further. Thank you so much. Thank you. Students, I'm going to put the link to make sure you get your credit for um, your attendance here today and I want to ask all the rest of the panelists to turn their microphones back on, turn their cameras back on, and we can go to the, the last part of our session this evening. We have a few questions to ask you panelists to give some advice to some of our students out there. So the first question is, what advice would you give them as they go through the college search process? And we're going to actually go in the same order that we presented. Oh, very good. Thank you. Um, so uh, my advice would be, uh, and I, I know this is a stressful time. Look at all these great colleges and universities out there and uh, the stress to pick the right one, or hopefully you'll get into the places you want to attend. But you know what? You all have a lot to offer all of the colleges and universities that you look at. So I really, my hope for you is that you have fun thinking about opportunities here and knowing that the school that you ultimately choose isn't necessarily going to make you who you are. Um, you're going to use those institutions to become all the great things that you'll become. So um, have some fun with this because you have a lot of options and your work with Chicago Scholars is great preparation for what's coming next. That's my, that's my thought. Awesome. I'm going to jump right in there. Um, thank you for that, Tom. I'd like to say one of the big things to consider um, when you're going through the college process is to shop. Make sure that you shop. I personally believe that there is an institution for every single student that meets every one of your needs. So when you're going through this process, don't be afraid to shop. Don't be afraid to ask questions. And probably the most important thing is remember that everybody on this screen and everyone that you meet throughout your college admissions process is there to work for you and with you. So don't be afraid to hinge on those um, relationships. Mine's gonna kind of align a little bit with what Tom mentioned. You know, I think we've all survived a really tough 18 months. Um, and I, I really would encourage you students to give yourself a little bit of grace during this period. You know, we understand as we're working with you and with Chicago Scholars on your behalf that there's been a lot that's been lost in the past 18 months. There's been lost opportunities and lost experiences. You've had to navigate crazy, crazy educational environments with remote learning and things like that. Um, we understand that, you know, and that's all going to be taken well into consideration when we're looking at your application. So even though you may not feel like you've done all the things that you wanted to do, that's okay. Um, you know, we understand that. We understand a lot of that has been out of your control. So um, while this process can certainly be stressful and crazy and just bonkers sometimes, um, just give yourself a little bit of grace uh, and understand that we are working for your best interest um, during this time. I would say, um, uh, and I'll try to switch up so that, it, that all of our wonderful years of admission don't start to overlap. I would say just like, number one, be selfish right? Uh, it may kind of sum up what we're all saying. Uh, and then also go read uh, anything about stereotype threat by Claude Steele. Um, it'll help you regardless of what your situation is, what your background is, how you got to college, but particularly if you are a BIPOC, first-gen, low-income student, uh, I would encourage students to, to take a peek at that even as you go through the college search. Great suggestions all around. Um, I love be selfish because I mean, this really is, this is the first choice you're gonna make that that is truly your own. So own it and and be true to yourself. Um, and, and the other piece of advice I would say is um, start early and reach out often. Um, you, you know, if you get stuck, if you're not sure what to do, just ask, ask one of us, ask a counselor, um, you know, you will, you will you will find barriers in this process and we want to help you get through them. Um, all, all of the adults in your life want to see you succeed at this. 
Yeah, great advice all. I guess the my one contribution would be to say, you know, once you start receiving your decisions, you know, if you have any decisions that are disappointing for you, um, please don't let that feel like it's a reflection on you as a student or as a person. Um, I know that for students, you know, the the process of being a going on the college search is extremely complicated and stressful, and there's all these different boxes that you have to feel like you have to check. Um, but it's a complicated process on our end as well. And there can be some difficult decisions that we have to make as admission counselors, but that does not reflect on the strengths that you've brought to the table, um, not just academically, but you're in your own, you know, day to day lives. So as decisions do start coming back, please just remind yourself that you're more than just a number, you're more than just a test score or a GPA or an involvement. Um, and no matter what, you are going to find a place um, that will connect with you. That is all wonderful advice. Um, so we are out of time. So I want to thank our panelists to start with. Thank you so much for being here. And also thank you for joining us tonight. So when you close this window, there'll be a link for you to do a quick four question survey. We really appreciate your feedback. Also, um, this is just one of the sessions being hosted tonight and tomorrow. Uh, so in about a week, make sure you, it will, it, you should probably sign up for the ones that are happening tonight and tomorrow. But in about a week, you'll find the recordings of this session and other sessions, in, just in case you missed it, at stripescan.com forward slash Chicago Scholars. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good night.